What's your name? Can't get some. <laughs> Mr. Paul Greengrass, who was the director of the second and third like, film, was no. like, hell no, I ain't doing that. And then Matt Damon was like, well, if, if he he's ain't the coming back, I ain't coming back. <laughs> So then Universal were like, oh guys, how yeah. do we do this without Mr. Greengrass and Matt mm. Damon? And this is the result. Active FM. Radio has never been better. What is up? How are you doing? This is the movie show. On Active FM. On Active FM. I'm Sash. My name's Ryan. And we are doing the Born Legacy today. And I think this was the one that I said wasn't going to be that great. Yes. This one actually is not part of our Matt Damon marathon. I just clicked. Although technically he does cameo in the film. Yeah. In the form of pictures. <laughs> but this one was weird. This so, is, yeah. This is a prequel reboot spin-off. <laughs> <laughs> that happens at the same time as the third film. <laughs> uh, yeah, this one was very, very interesting. At least they didn't do what we thought that they were going to do. Yeah, where like, they, yes, where they make um, a Jeremy Renner play mm. Jason Bourne because that just would have been yes. dumb. But Jason, they didn't do that. Jason Bourne is now played by <laughs> <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> Jeremy Renner. So mm. yeah, actually what happened, I was very confused going into this film um, because I was just like, why? But then this is the background story to the film. So... Um, the Bourne series was one, two, and three. And, you know, the third one, they ended off well. In fact, the third one, we did it last week, won awards. The third one was good. It was solid, you know, like the third one was proper. And then Universal decided, yeah, because it did so well, we're going to, like, keep this thing going. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, Mr. Paul Greengrass, who was the director of the second and third like, film, was no. like, hell no, I ain't doing that. And then Matt Damon was like, well, if, if he ain't coming back, I ain't coming back. <laughs> <laughs> so then Universal were like, oh guys, how yeah. do we do this without Mr. Greengrass and Matt mm. Damon? And this is the result of the, um, yeah. So basically what happened was Jeremy Renner plays the protagonist in this film and the director is Tony Gilroy. Mm. Now Tony actually wrote um, the first, second and third one. So they they um, yeah, they basically just got him to, to direct. He's only ever directed three other, two other films because this was the third film. So this one, and then he did Duplicity, which I think was a good film. I've heard it's a good film. I personally haven't watched it. Yes, that one's with... Um, who is that one with, actually? There's two famous actors that are in Duplicity. But then there's another one that has... Uh, why do I have Keanu Reeves in my mind? It's not Keanu Reeves. So Duplicity is a 2009 comedy that stars Julia Roberts. Yes, Julia Roberts and Clive Owen. I feel like it's a romantic crime comedy. That sounds very interesting, right? No. A romantic crime comedy. <laughs> so he directed that one. And then he also directed um, Michael Clayton, which has the good looking old guy. The good looking old guy. Are we talking about uh, James Bond guy? No, 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 no. Good looking old he guy. He does the Nespresso ads. I, I can't believe I forgot his name. Oh, George Clooney. Yes. There we go. Yes. George Clooney. So those are the only other um, two films that he's directed. So he doesn't have a lot of directorial um, credits. But he obviously is a writer and he's also a producer. But he was the one that directed this film. It came out in 2007. It's two hours and 15 minutes long, which is actually longer than both. Um, in fact, all the first three films. Yeah. And yeah, the cast is, is pretty much new there are sort of some returning actors but mm. we have jeremy renner who plays aaron cross we have rachel wise who plays dr martis shearing and we have edward norton yeah edward norton is such a mm. diverse actor yeah he is because when i was looking at his film filmography I, I don't know if you remember the film motherless brooklyn yeah where he had that um yeah that's right that, i can't remember what it's mm. called now but that thing where you basically you say things uncontrollably. Oh, yeah, that's right. That, do you remember that? He was very yeah. good in that one. And then obviously he was in um, Glass Onion. Mm. He was crazy in that. He was in Fight Club. So he does quite a good psychotic character or weird yeah. or sick or weird. He normally or odd, plays the odd bad character. guy. Yeah. Like he does normally play mm. the bad or he's mm. the crazy person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he was, he was in this. Um, and then... You had Isa, uh, Isa, Oscar Isaac. 
he was only in it for a very short time. Yep. He was in the in the beginning, and then yeah, you had other 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 actors that re- well reprised their roles slash yes. But I did not know this, Ryan. I'm about to blow your mind. Are you ready? Go for it. <laughs> Rachel Wise Wise is married to someone since 2011. She has been married to this person. No, that can't. That doesn't make sense. But anyway, maybe they were dating for really long because this film came out in 2007. Yeah. Who do you think she's married to, Ryan? Hang on. No, no don't look, Ryan. Right. <laughs> don't look. <laughs> in a second, I'm guessing. No, you're not guessing. I'm He's guessing. waiting for the answer. Okay, I'll tell you, Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig. He plays the latest James Bond. Yeah. Yes. So can oh. you believe it? Those two are married. Wow. And apparently during the shoots in Manila, um, the producer Frank Marshall was actually glad to see them come together saying it was pretty cool to have James Bond on the Bourne set with Aaron Cross. And we had a great time. It was really fun. Well, they kind of classify uh, the Bourne movies as they're at the same levels as, as the James Bond. in that same kind of area. Yeah. yeah. As James Bond and all of those kind of spy films and action kind of films. So the one thing that that I didn't like about this film was that there was more yada yada than action kick and. <laughs> in fact, they say they say that if you've watched the trailer, then you've watched most of the action s- scenes because uh, yeah, there was about ten minutes of of. Of action. I must be honest, even the storyline to a degree, like it mm. didn't, like when it ended. So I, I watched it in in three different parts. And when I got to the end, I was like, no, it can't be done. Like, what? Yep. You, like, I literally felt like yeah. that. I was like, what? It's done? Then I was like thinking through the plot line yeah. and like the different beats yeah. and like the, the story points. Yep. And I was just like, okay, wow. So that's, okay. So they were like, ta da. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that um so tony had actually written um jason Bourne for and then because greengrass and damon didn't want to join he then had to basically rewrite the story but now without jason yeah. Bourne in it um so yeah i feel like rewrites sometimes can be very dangerous and I feel like also Universal were just trying to make money. Like, I think that was the whole aim of this film. So, that, so in other words, they were pushing this thing. Yeah. And whenever... Uh, one thing we have we have come to realize is whenever a studio is out for money, the films generally are They stuff it up. Yeah, they stuff it up like something mm. chronic. So, yeah. I think that's what happened with this film. It is a very odd film. It's an interesting mm. concept, though, because, like, you're in the same universe. It's the same franchise, but the main character's not there. The way they, they juxtaposed it with the events of the third film, I, yeah. I did think that was clever, the way they did it. Like, Yeah, you kind of see old scenes, yeah. some, some scenes from the... yeah. And the way they... Like, this mm. literally happened at the same time as the... The, the, se- the third film like yeah. even the reporter that got shot at Waterloo like yeah, they brought yeah, yeah, that yeah. back in exactly and, yeah, and then obviously with Pam Landy like at the mm. end um, and then the, the the same theme song at the end the, when that started playing I was like oh they, that's weird they're playing it in the middle uh. of this film and then it ended I was like what? yeah yeah so and I, I do know like a lot of people when watching reviews they don't like this one they're just like mm-mm the Born series is good, except for the Born Legacy. But then I've also now seen reviews where they're saying even the last one is like they should have just left it at the third film. Yeah. It's kind of like I don't know if you remember when we did The Hobbit. Um, so The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings is three books and they made three films. Yes. Yes, they made three films. I think so. Did they, they didn't split the last one into four, say, right? Uh, I'll take your word for it. I can't remember. Anyway, but then The Hobbit is one book and then they ended up splitting it up. But then the first film was good and uh, watching it now, I was like, mm, the, the, the second and the third film, like they really could have done The Hobbit in one film and it probably would have been good. Or maybe mm. two. Maybe they could have stretched it to two. But like, yeah, you know, sometimes it's like Fast and Furious. You know, when you just need to let the thing die. <laughs> uh, which thing? <laughs> The, the, the franchise. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a post on Instagram that had um, Vin Diesel on, you know, those like f- scooters for old people. Oh, uh, yeah. And it was the poster <laughs> <laughs> for, uh, for Fast 39. Well, now there's a... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, now there's yeah, no. now it's more like fast seventy. Yeah, so play that number however you want to. Hectic stuff, man. Maybe someone is you know. But like Ryan, if you had to compare the Bourne franchise with like Mission Impossible, Mission Impossible is more like in a perfect world of a spy or a not a spy like someone who's trying to you know because everything's like like so awesome uh where the born like like the born series a lot of the action and a lot of the even the character like jason born himself mm. um they, they they feel more real because you know they, they're not like i said like there, there hasn't been you're not seeing like Jason Bourne like in this latest Ferrari or like this hot Lamborghini and there he is racing, you know. Uh, and uh, with this, it's a more raw like action, which is what I really, really enjoy about it. Uh, where even with the Bourne legacy, I don't know if you felt the same. And I know that uh, the review that I was watching as well, the guy... When the guy said it, I was like, yes, that's true. Is it in here, uh, Jeremy feels more like like a superhero. Like, did you ever, like, like he just, pew, he's there. And yeah. Ah, and then it's like, oh, yay, he's here. Yeah, he's saving yeah. the day. Yeah, no, I get what you're Where, saying. With Jason Bourne, like whenever the asset rocked up, you were like, oh, oh. <laughs> but now you know, I also watched thing. a review for the for, for the fifth one where they were just like it's just the same old same old and yeah. the asset is mentioned every like two minutes in the film. Yeah. Personally, for me, I, the th- the first the the first one, Born um, Legacy, no Born Identity, yeah. that was a good film. It was a very yeah. good film. It was an interesting film. It was uh, something mm. fresh, something new. The action was raw. Um, personally, for me, I don't know. Like maybe if they'd done it differently, I would I would feel different. But like, I I almost feel like they should have stopped there. I think I would have felt like, like ah, surely we can go more, you know? Yeah, but like they did, and they did yeah. it badly, in my opinion. Well, the third one wasn't that bad. The but third like, one they made up. Yeah, they yeah. made up, but. <laughs> Like, you shouldn't have to make... Like, for example, Pirates of the Caribbean 1, 2, and 3. Those three films almost feel like one film just because they, they all work together. Do you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Like, they are, And I firmly believe they should have ended there with Pirates. And I'm a, I am yeah. love Pirates. But, like, since then, I just feel like they... And other people disagree you with me. You know what me. it is? I think it works well when, when there is one um, antagonist. And throughout all three movies they try and take him out and in the third one they take him out he gets caught whatever he's put to jail or he dies or whatever they put an axe through it and then that's where it should end now yeah but now when they're like oh yeah and also now there's this also this dude over here who apparently came out of the same thing and check what he's doing oh and he's got his mistress and he's in love yeah oh yeah and also now he stumbled across (laughs) like you you stretching it now yeah so i mean the, the one thing that they say is in the last Bourne movie that that we need to watch next is it's I mean it would be be cool if Jeremy and uh, Matt Damon like came together yes and but then they didn't do that yeah yeah that would have been very cool it's it would have like, made more sense it wouldn't yeah but then they didn't they really they didn't do that so it's kind of like oh okay so it's like what is the point yeah, like what okay. is, and you know i actually saw um there was apparently a series that came out as well that's included in the born franchise it's called a uh, treadstone obviously that's the name of the whole um hmm. You know, secret thing that they created the the assassins under, but apparently it, it did so badly that after ten episodes it was cancelled. Yeah. So like it really, it's just something where you're like, guys, you're trying to milk something that it's just not there. The thing is that you can't you can't keep uh, stretching and drawing mm. people with one like. Mm. So I think the best example I can use was the blacklist. Like you have the blacklist and it really pulls you in because you're like, who's reading? Who's reading to yeah. who the hell is this guy? And is he the, you know, is this her father? Is it? No, it's not her father. And then like you, you're like at the like sixth series and you're like, uh, apparently it is apparently it is her father. Then then it, then you're like, no, it's not her father. Then it's like, no, it is her father. No, it's not. Her, no, it is her father. Then you're <laughs> like, I don't care anymore. Yeah. I actually don't care anymore. I actually anymore. don't care anymore. I actually really don't care. Mm. And then they, they kind of start playing on all these different 
uh, criminals, which is pretty cool. But then you kind of like I, I, we didn't feel drawn in. So that's the same thing here. Yeah. Like, why are they after Matt Damon? Yeah. And Matt Damon just wants to be left alone. And then they send in the asset. And But meanwhile, there's a corrupt government. Oh, no, no. Now they invented this other thing because there was, what, Treadstone, right? Yeah. And then there was Black... I think Blackbriar was the first one. And then one. Blackbriar... Yeah. No. Uh, Something like that. Yeah. And then that thing came out. And you're like, oh, no, they've rebooted the program. And then it's like, but they got to try and keep it quiet. And then it's like, okay. And then even like with this one, there was the pills, the medication... And like that, that you that see? wasn't the thing in like. They're really any, trying to. Stri- yeah. They're really trying to like. Yeah. Pull. You know what I think it is? It's exactly what you've described. Where when a, when you've got a trilogy that works, it's mm. not actually three separate stories. Oftentimes, it's one it's, big it's story. One big story yeah. But they've just gone like into a lot of detail in like the plot lines and uh, the way they've ended each mm. one. They've ended it almost on like a cliffhanger, but it's it's almost ended. Yeah. It's ended. It's it's given you. S- s- it's given you resolution, mm. but it hasn't completely yeah. resolved the story. Lord of the Rings was good. Yeah, it? Lord of the Rings. But you see, Lord of the Rings, mm. is a, it comes from a book. And with a book, you have a lot of planning. You have a lot of, you know, mm. you have a writer who's gone into detail. And they're not just writing to try and make money. They're actually writing because the story is not actually complete. Yeah. So there's, they, they're building onto it. But then again, also, they know when to bring it to an end. Yeah. Do you understand? And like that, I think, is the problem with a lot of like franchises and even series is that they never know when to bring it to an end Mm. two series that i think have done a good job at this the first one is the sherlock Holmes series with benedict cumberbatch that one they really could have they could have kept it going because it's sherlock holmes you know like i mean you can keep on going like sherlock holmes is kind of like csi or you know like you can always Mm. bring in because the the but what works with sherlock holmes is the fact that he's a detective which means that you love the character but at the same time there's always a new case do you understand? Yeah. But with that one, they ended it after, I think it was three seasons. Done. Yeah. And there weren't even a lot of episodes. And, you know, they could have kept it going, but they didn't. They ended it and it mm. worked. You know, it was like you and and you wanted more, but you were satisfied. Like for me, a series should always end with you wanting more because then it's a good series. You know, like you'll you'll go back, you'll rewatch it. Another one that's doing a, a well, hopefully they'll do a good job. Obviously, the final season hasn't come out yet, but it's Stranger Things. And the Duffer Brothers, both who are very good writers, have said we will not go past this point. We can go past this point. But we're not gonna. And I think yeah. that's where that's where you've got to understand is like and I bet you Netflix is gonna try and like push there's gonna be spin offs, there's gonna be prequels, there's gonna oh, be like I yeah. bet you Netflix is gonna do that. Who was the monster in the first series? Exactly. Let's find out how they're you gonna came like, about. And you know, they could possibly mm. do a spin off. Um uh, I wouldn't they like might I, even I get think a- I'm pretty sure Friends tried to do a spin off with Joey. And yeah. I think it just flopped. Yeah, they and did. I mean Friends was a very mm. By the way, Ryan, do you know that Matthew Perry has passed away? No, you're joking. I'm not joking. He died. Uh, so we are recording the show on Monday, the 30th of no uh, October. Yes. He died on the 29th yesterday. No wonder why I've seen his face around. Mm-hmm. Crazy, right? It's 54. Hey, that sucks. No? Yes. Is he 50? Was he 50? I think he was 50. Probably. How crazy is that, though? Oh, wow. Yeah. Sure. So, but like with friends... Like, Friends was super, 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 mm. super famous. But even Friends, there were some seasons where it just... They, they started it well and mm. ended it well. But the middle seasons got to a point where you were just like, okay, guys, what's happening now? You know when you feel like... It's that whole thing where yeah. you're like, and then... Yeah. And, 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 and it's like they're trying to scrape for like an... Mm. And then, oh yeah, by the way, like side note... They got a sister. Oh, wow! And the sister <laughs> wants to be just like them. <laughs> yeah, so... It's yeah. It's just. I feel like. Just ended. Just ended. Like the black blacklist one is a good a good idea because the thing is yeah. this: at the minute you find out whether or not he is the father or not, you're going to lose interest in the show because that's what was keeping you. I just got to a point where I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, I, I I I can see what you're doing. Yeah. You you playing with you 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 like because even if I in the next episode I find out something that who Reddington is. I know that it's going to probably change. So you lose your, 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 what is the word I'm looking for? The, the genuineness, mm. the, yeah. When, when it comes to script writing, it's, n- I personally don't think the whole thing of, okay, let's write the first one and see how it does. And then if we do the, do you understand? Like that mm. whole, that whole concept can mm. be a little bit risky. 
Obviously, I know that there's finances and there's like, no, the production company doesn't want to sign three films. I know there's that. But I think as a writer, you have to, in your mind, already know if, we go, if we're going to take this forward, this is where it's actually going to end up. That's mm. why the Duffer brothers won't go past season five because they've always had the story and they've planned it out. And that, like, like, like I, I think season five was already written before season four was released. Like that's how well planned out they've like they they already know the answers they already know where this is going and then they're able to do brilliant like callbacks and you know bring things up from the past and make things make sense and yeah. then you know you're like oh flip do you remember in season one mm. when this uh, like that's that, that's why it you know, happened that like mm. that's good storytelling it's solid that's it's solid storytelling mm. but this whole storytelling of you know we don't really know what happens in the next one mm. but because this one did so well let's try I don't think that works like honestly I don't think. And like everything has a big idea and once that big idea has kind of like been fleshed out there's nowhere really to go from there you kind of need to bring it to an end now like yeah. guys every story has an end hmm. and if you don't end it properly yeah then then, then yeah then you just wash yeah wash that thing. and for me personally the born the born friend the first one was good from then the third one was good, but the mm. third one had to do a lot of like damage control. It did do well for but damage control. But if it just control. ended there. Yeah. <coughs> but imagine how good the third one could have, or how mm. much better the third one could have mm. been as well if the second one was good. And like, mm. like, yeah, I just, I feel like, for me, the Bourne franchise doesn't, like the action, I know the action's mm. insane, but from a storytelling perspective, it doesn't live up to, for example, like, like we've done, we've done lots of marathons before and you know, you, you get to the end and you're like, yeah. ah, that was so good. Like, I honestly am tired. I actually, I feel like <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, we've got one more to go. Yeah, here we <laughs> like, go that's what I'm feeling like. I feel like I'm, yeah. I'm tired now. Like mm. I'm, I'm looking forward to this ending mm. and us moving on and watching other things because yeah. uh, that's, gen and you shouldn't feel like that when watching a franchise because, yeah, that's not what a franchise is all about, man. Yeah. So this one was very interesting. Yeah, I think that's that. That that's basically the. So I, I, already in the next film, I'm already like okay. At least Matt Damon and Paul uh, Paul Greengrass are back mm. in the next one. But I mean, I already doing research for this one mm. saw bad reviews for e it. Exactly. So you're like, oh great, yeah. Apparently, they say it's just like another three. Yeah, it's just like the same thing over again. I don't know if they came. They're like, all right, let's just leave. Let's let's leave our our fans with with. With with Matt Damon as Jason Bourne in their memory, I bet you that he meant that uh, Julia's character are going to get together. Yeah, well, well, I kind of get get the sense, yeah, that that's that's going to happen. If it doesn't happen, then I love she dies. <laughs> what 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 is the probability of her dying, Ryan? Let's make some let's make some predictions for the last one. Okay, are they going to land up together? Yes. Okay. I vote yes. Are you saying that they're going to sail off into the sunset at the end? <laughs> I don't know if they'll sail off into like, the sunset, but I do think that there's going to be romance between the two of them. We know already the government is going to be chasing after them. We know that there's going to be assets. <laughs> we know that there's going to be assets. And we know that they can, that he's going to beat up the assets. Mm -hmm. So is he going to give his life? Has his amnesia been sorted out? It sort of, hey. Yeah, his amnesia has he, he kind of remembered by the end of He has flashbacks, but then like it's, not, he, yeah. it's not who he is. And he chose to walk away from it. And... Did they did they get into why he made the decision to... Be, to did they, did, they didn't really cover that, no. hey? No. And I got a sense in the third one, like life was just at a low for him. Yeah, and then he made like a dumb life choice. And he's like, oh, I'm going to give gonna myself go, over. I'm going to go kill people. Yeah. I'm going to go join the army kind of thing. You know, live. It, maybe he's going to live just a nice peaceful life with his Who knows? Maybe we'll come back and we'll be like, oh my gosh, it was so amazing. They ended it. I don't think so though, personally. But the thing is, I find, I feel like Jason Bourne because there's a lot of criminals that know him a lot of people that know bad guys who know him yeah so i don't think he's ever going to be left alone yeah so even if they go to another country there'll always be someone they can find it's find like him. it's again it's like raymond reddington like someone's always going to be after him unless he gets that surgery that 
Johnny Depp's character got in um, The Tourist, where he completely... Alexander Pier, where he completely changed his face. Yeah. There's a way to do it. Yeah. I mean, how do you solve this thing now? He's a, he's a very... Although, no, no. He's only a threat within the government. Yeah, that's the thing. Maybe we find out how he really forgot his memory. Like maybe something happens and he just ends up in a desert and then he wakes up and he... Do you that know what I'm saying? <laughs> that is actually but, very true. But, we don't know how he But this time memory. it's really... But this time it's like for real, for real. Like he's just... Nah. Maybe he remembers he has a third identity. Because... Ooh, <laughs> I really feel like this film's not going to be this fun. I feel like we're hyping it up and we're going to watch it I and we're going to be like... Okay. Where can it go? They literally... I saw... Was it you that said it all? I heard someone say it's basically the Bourne ultimatum again. Maybe he becomes someone who kills assets. Protecting people from assets. So if you think that an asset is after you from the government, then you phone Jason Bourne. And then he's at your doorstep. I feel like he just wants to live a quiet life from in everywhere. India with the love of his life that they killed yeah. in the second film. But the thing, or maybe he, ah, you see, I don't know. Yeah, because the bad guys is the US government, right? And the secret project to wipe out whoever they want to wipe out. But then they wipe out. <laughs> you know what I think we should do after this one? <laughs> we should watch Mission Impossible, the latest Mission uh, Impossible, and then compare it. Yes. Yes. Although I personally have issues with the latest Mission Impossible, I would just like to state that. Coming up to the movie show. <laughs> yes. What is Sashi's S- issue? My issue with the latest Mission Impossible. Yeah. And then what I thought about the movie was. It was great. Ryan's going to love it. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Not so sure. Soon. To, coming soon to a movie show near you. Yeah. I and guess we're all borned out now. Yeah, no, we're, we're just like... I feel like I'm borned out. <sighs> yeah, I'm borned out. And I've never experienced this, eh? Like with the And the last was, movie, like, can we, like, do, do, if, you know, go back and listen like to our last good. one. We were like, yeah, well, this is brilliant. Finally, oh, well, they, f- yeah. they fixed it. They saved this it. This is my favorite. Um, and now it's just like, okay, I'm done now. Got there, you know, done there. Worn the t-shirt. Exactly. So we need another movie now. We do. Mm. We really do. So we're going to head over to Mission Impossible. There you go. Yeah. Mm. All right. But until then. See you then. This has been The Movie Show. On Active FM. Peace.